Hello, Redling. Mrs. Van Sickle here with this week's First Chapter Friday book selection, Unbound by Anne E. Berg. I chose this book not just because it's an award-winning piece of historical fiction about slavery in the Deep South during the 1800s, but because even though it was a very tough story to understand, how this horrible time in American history could actually happen, I could not put this book down. Written as a novel in verse uh, from the voice of young Grace, a nine-year-old plantation slave, she shares her experiences of perseverance and inner strength through unthinkable adversity and heartbreak. I feel it's an honorable tribute to Black History Month. Check it out. Scholastic Audio presents Unbound, a novel in verse by Anne E. Berg, read by Bonnie Turpin. Part One. When Mama tells me I'm going to the big house, she makes me promise to always be good, to listen to the missus and never talk back to lower my eyes and say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and not to speak less spoken to first. She tells me about the new dress I'm sure to get and sweet muffins every morning, she says, pulling the thread from Thomas's old baby gown. I wind the limp thread round a stick, slow and careful so not to break it. I like soft clothes and sweet muffins, but not if it means leaving mama. Since I was little, Mama's been telling me, you keep those eyes looking up. That's where the good Lord and his angels live. So how come now she's changing her mind? Promise you'll keep your eyes down, she says. I promise. Promise you'll keep your mouth closed. I promise. Promise you won't talk back. Promise you'll keep your thoughts and questions about and suddenly, like a clap of thunder in a sweet blue sky, all my promising starts feeling like a fistful of thorns is scratching my brain. I promise, I promise, and then crack! I drop to the dirt floor and crunch into a ball. I won't go, I say. I want to stay with you. And Sarah stands in the cabin doorway. Willie's playing with the hem of her dress, and she's holding Thomas in her arms. Mama shoes him away and kneels down. She tugs me apart and takes me into her arms. I pull away. I won't go, I cry. I won't leave Uncle Jim and his night stories or the sound of his soft singing when he tends our moonlight garden. I won't go, I kick. I won't leave little Thomas and Willie. And Sarah's old. She can sing to him when Mama works in the fields. But who'll stand over him waving a dried leaf to give him a breeze when they nap? Who'll play with him and chase him into a lump of giggles when they wake? I won't go. I won't go. I pound and thrash, scream and stomp. I won't go. I want to stay with you. Mama wraps her arms tight round mine. My sweet baby child, she whispers. My sweet baby child. The wetness on her face mingles with my tears and tastes like blood. Uncle Jim says Mama's the prettiest mama in the county. Her arms and legs may be bony as kindling, he says, laughing, but she's got the softest eyes and the kindest heart. I wish I had soft brown eyes like Mama's and skin what's dark and smooth like hers, instead of light blue eyes and pale skin. Well, Grace, you have my curls, Mama always says, kissing my hair. 
My baby's beautiful, just the way she is. Mama tries to be cheery even when she's tired. And Sarah says that's because the good Lord put Mama on this earth to remind folks there's still goodness in the world. I agree, and Uncle Jim does too. Uncle Jim is Thomas and Willie's daddy. I don't have a daddy. Of course, and Sarah says everybody's got a daddy. I just never laid eyes on mine. I never heard him sing or feel him lifting me to the moon and laughing like Uncle Jim does with Willie and Thomas. It's my Aunt Sarah what's been helping Mama take care of me since I was a baby. She's not really my aunt, but Mama says the folks will love you, will hold you and soothe you, will worry about you, and make sure you's clothed and fed. Mama says these folks is your family. She says Uncle Jim's my daddy in all the ways what count. I only call him Uncle Jim because that's what I called him before he jumped the broom and married my mama. Mama says we got two days before I leave for the big house. Says it's no use stamping our feet or crying. Says there's things we can change and things we can't. You's only going up the hill, she says, smiling. But her voice quivers and a sorrow and tear clings to her bottom lash. Up the hill don't seem far, but Master Allen lives up the hill. And if you cross Master Allen, he might send you away, like he sent away Uncle John. 